Hey, welcome to the Wedding Reporter Podcast. Today we are talking about how you know you're hiring the right photographer. And we have the perfect person to talk about this, a photographer herself. This is Elizabeth Steed. She is with Whimsy and Wilder. And she is a wedding and boudoir photographer based in Franklin, Tennessee. And she photographed her 200th wedding last spring. Woo! That's awesome. <laughs> and next year will be her 10th year being a full-time photographer. So welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm really excited to talk about this topic because there are a lot of photographers out there and a lot to choose from, a lot of different styles, a lot of different personalities. Mm -hmm. So talking about how you know it's the right one. It's like, how do you know it's the right, right wedding dress? Like, how do you know it's the right photographer? Mm -hmm. So um, this will be really cool. But first, let's talk about your business. Let's get to know you. How did you get started? Um, I started taking photos when I was in high school just for fun. Um, and then I went to college for horticulture out of all things. Uh, oh my but gosh. Was still, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but was still doing photos on the side. And I went professional in 2012. Um, and then I went full time in 2015 uh, because I lost my job as a greenhouse manager. And oh, wow. I didn't know what else to do. And I kept booking wedding after wedding. And 2015 was my first full-time season. And I photographed 26 weddings that year. Uh, no so way. it worked out beautiful. <laughs> oh <laughs> and my I, goodness. Yeah. And I haven't stopped. I usually am doing 30 to 40 a year. Um, wow. Then yeah. So it's been fun. I, I did my 200th wedding last year in March. Um, and so then I did... Cool. 32 weddings last year. So hopefully I'll wow. make it to 250. Like <laughs> that's my goal is yeah. 250 and then 300 and <laughs> so wow. on and so forth. So yeah. yeah. That's amazing really that you've kept track this good. whole time of which mm -hmm. number you're on. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was love last that. year. Well, I was asked actually by one of my brides when she oh. we had our first meeting and she was like, well, how many weddings have you photographed? I'm like, Oh, I don't hmm. know. I, I mean, I second shot a lot. Um, so I second shot with my husband who owns a photography business as well. And oh, cool. so I worked with him for, uh, three wedding seasons full time. And so I second shot a lot of weddings with him. So if I added second shooting weddings as well, I'd be past yeah. 300 most likely. Wow. So. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Yeah. That's so cool. I love it. So Yeah. <laughs> You have the experience. I mean, you've probably seen everything under the sun as far as weddings yeah. weddings go and <laughs> wedding photography goes. And so, yeah, it's yeah. awesome to talk to you about this. So first question, why is it important that couples click with their photographer? Well, you're with them all day long. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yes. you're, you are with your photographer all day. I mean, I get there when my bride sits in the chair for hair and makeup, and then I mm -hmm. usually am leaving about 9 or 10 p.m. right when the dance floor gets a little crazy um, is when I <laughs> end up leaving. So that could be a 12-hour, 14-hour day, and mm -hmm. you're with me that entire time. And it's so important to be able to click with your photographer because you want to also feel comfortable. And if you're comfortable mm -hmm. with me, then you're going to be comfortable in front of the camera because it's awkward. Taking photos yeah. is weird. Let's be real. Like I don't <laughs> even like to be in front of the camera. And so I love that you're I saying that <laughs> coming from the, the mouth of a photographer being photographed is weird, but that's is, why like... you guys are so great at what you do because you make people feel comfortable in front of the camera. Yeah. So that's so great. Yeah. It's, it's important to make sure my couples feel so comfortable to where when they look back on their images that they're like, oh, this is very much us. And this is a great reflection of us as a couple and what our wedding day represented. So um, I just finding that right photographer is your number one when it comes to just booking a photographer in general. Mm -hmm. Um so websites are huge, making sure that the photographer has a website that reflects their personality. Um, yeah. And then if you can just have like a phone call or a face-to-face -face meeting, COVID was really hard because 
most of my couples, I did meetings in my office all the time. So we Mm -hmm. would get together and then we would sit and chat for an hour to two hours. And then you get to have that personal experience when you see their face in person. Um, Zoom is nice, but also Zoom can just glitch like crazy and it's super awkward because like you talk over each other you don't understand what they're saying it's just really weird um Mm -hmm. so really connecting with your photographer face-to-face is so important um and if you can't do face-to-face a phone call just uh, there have been so many phone calls where I feel like I've known my brides for years and it just takes one phone call yes like your personalities have to mesh because your photographer can make or break your wedding day, to be honest, yes, like having seriously. a really crappy wedding photographer, your bridal party should love your photographer too. And if mm-hmm. your personality meshes with the photographer, their personality is going to mesh with all of your friends and family. And, you know, I've booked many weddings off of one wedding because I meshed with the family and you become part of the family. And so that's how you get more weddings is just by mm-hmm. clicking with the couple. Um, so it's so important. I tell every single couple, you have to love your photographer, their personality, their images can be beautiful, but at the end of the day, it's the personality that wins your heart over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. And just like finding the perfect match of like a photography style that you like and a personality that you like, because like you said, sometimes it's one or the other. And yep. having both of those things are equally as important for your wedding day. And mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people say like your photos are going to last your lifetime. Yes, they will. But also the memories of your day too. It's like yeah. you remember what happened and actions that were taken by your vendors and stuff. And that affects mm-hmm. you also. And so I think that yeah. is important to make sure both of those criteria are there when you're hiring somebody. So very good. Yeah. Um, so as far as like interviewing photographers, like how do you even start going about that process? Well, I think reaching out to, well, if your venue has a preferred vendor list or a list Mm -hmm. of photographers that they like working with, um, I do think that's important to see what the venue is saying, um, because those photographers have worked at that venue multiple times or the event coordinators at the venue personally get along with those vendors typically. Um, Mm -hmm. and vendor team is huge. Like you said, like the vendor team is really important on a wedding day. And if all the vendors can get along, it's literally the dream team and the bride and groom have the best day ever. Um, so it is really important to see what the venue recommends vendor wise. Um, and also to get on those vendor recommendation lists, we work really hard. (laughs) Yeah, we have to prove that, you know, we're worth being on that list. So if we have worked really hard to get on that list, then, you know, the venue is going to put that in your hands as a bride and say, hey, these are the people that we love you to work with. Um, So starting, starting with the preferred vendor list, I think is really good at a venue. It's really overwhelming, right? When you get engaged, it's, It is Mm -hmm. so overwhelming. And the first thing people ask, right when you get that ring, it could be 20 minutes later, when is your wedding day? Where are you getting married? Who are you going to book? And it's kind of like, whoa, let's pump the brakes. Let's (laughs) enjoy being engaged. (laughs) Like, it's just, it's hard when you write, when you get engaged and then it's a full-time job planning a wedding. So Mm -hmm. when you get that venue, that list is going to help you tremendously uh, to kind of take that weight of anxiety of like overwhelming feeling of, I don't know where to start. So, um, the preferred vendor list is great. If they have five photographers, look at all five, look at their websites. If you like their bio, if you like the vibe that you get from their website, if you like their photos and the way they edit, then reach out to them. Um, Mm -hmm. you don't have to reach out to all of them because your style, you know, you should love the photos and the way they edit is huge because that's what they're representing on their website should be what you're going to get in a full gallery at the end of the day. 
Um, so figuring out what style you prefer as a bride is huge. Um, mm -hmm. and reaching out to those vendors, um, in specific. And if the venue doesn't have, you know, that photographer style that you're looking for, then I would say asking your friends and family, um, is huge too. Word of mouth. That's the way that vendors get our business. Um, you know, it takes one amazing experience for a bride to go tell her friends and family, Hey, it's this photographer that I worked with and you should book them as well. Um, mm -hmm. so reaching out to all of your girlfriends or, you know, any of the couples that you're friends with and asking who they used as a photographer. Um, so then you hear it from their mouth of like, Hey, this photographer was either really good or really bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Their experience is a huge deciding factor for you. So I would start venue yeah. first. And then if you don't like any of them, then move on to asking friends and family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. And like, I think too, a lot of times, like, this doesn't always have to be the case, but it's helpful if a photographer mm -hmm. has already shot in your venue and you can actually see the photos that they took of that wedding. And mm -hmm. so like looking at the website of the wedding venue or looking on the website of that photographer and maybe they blogged a wedding of the same venue that you're at. That's super helpful, I think, too. And mm -hmm. then, you know, even looking on like Nashville Bride Guide, it's like we have featured so many weddings throughout the years. And like Aww. chances are we have one that's at your venue if you're getting married in the Nashville area and you can see yeah. and check out if you like the photos from that wedding and hire that photographer too. And so, yeah, I think that's all like really great advice that you gave. So mm -hmm. bravo for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So now you've kind of let's in the process, like you've narrowed down a few like photographers that you think would be a good fit. Like what questions should you ask during the interview process when you're interviewing photographers to know if they're the right fit? Mm, there's a lot of questions. Um, I know <laughs> so many. Well, I can tell you right now. Already. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's funny cause there are wedding websites that tell you, you should ask X, Y, and Z. And a big one is <laughs> I've gotten questions of what do you shoot with? Like, what's my gear at the end of the day? What oh. bride really cares about the gear that you use? Yeah. Like don't ask that they're, question. They're like, probably <laughs> not even familiar with it. If they're not a photographer no. themselves, like I can see if right. you're a photographer and you're just interested or like want to know, but like, if you're not, it's not going to make any sense to you. I agree. Right. <laughs> so don't ask that question because yeah. there are so many websites that are like, oh, that's one of the questions that you should ask. No, don't. Like, don't yeah. just, no, I think it's super important um, to ask how they run a wedding day at the end of the day, mm -hmm. like how would you approach certain situations on a wedding day? Wedding days are crazy at times and mm -hmm. timelines are huge. And if it's a photographer that does not care about timeline, then the day might not go really well. So yeah. I think that if you could talk to and ask a question of like, do you make a timeline on the wedding day or is that something I have to do? Um, another good one is if they're insured. Um, I feel yes. like if you run a business, you better be insured. Simple 100%. as that. If you are a legit business, you have to have insurance. Um, and that insurance, you know, if a couple has to have that for their wedding venue and you don't have it, then you're not really a business in my eyes. Um, mm -hmm. You need to have insurance. Um, I've dropped a lens on a wedding day, literally oh shattered gosh. the glass. Like, and it so happened sad. as I was taking, oh, it was horrible. <laughs> Oh. And so things happen and right. I just literally rolled with it. And I was like, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. We're just going to stick another lens on and then mm -hmm. go along with the, the photos for the bridal party. And so insurance and knowing how they're going to handle their business on a wedding day is huge. Um, and then asking about how they back up their images uh, after the wedding yeah. day, um, because you as a wedding photographer, those images are so precious and mm -hmm. you have to 
guard them with your life. (laughs) So like I have all the memory cards. I just shot a wedding in in April. I still have the memory cards that have all of the photos. I have not deleted them because I haven't delivered the wedding yet. And Mm -hmm. then I have my working drive and then I have my backup drive and then I have the cloud. So you have all of these different steps of, and those weddings from, you know, eight years ago in the cloud. It it just, you hold on to that. Um, So understanding how they hold on to your images and if it expires. Um, Another thing is always Mm -hmm. sign a contract, sign a contract. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that do not have contracts and that is going to save your butt and the photographer's butt in the end of the day or any vendor, you know, like, Every vendor should have a contract. Read through that contract multiple times. Make sure that there's nothing missing. Make sure that you're covered, that if something were to happen to the photographer, that they should be the ones in charge of finding you a new photographer. If something like death were to happen, then they have it lined up where, you know, it's easy for you as a bride to get another photographer and not have legal ties to anything. Um, so having a contract, a legit legal contract is huge. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. There's so many things that you yeah. should I think that's so important too. And like a lot of people are like, oh, photography, that's the fun thing. And like, they only want to focus on the pretty things of the wedding, but there's a lot of uglier things that you have to focus on for the wedding to make sure everything runs without a hitch. And one of those things is a contract. And like, even if you're somebody who is like, I don't understand contracts. I can't read all of this jargon. Like, I'm just going to sign it, whatever I want this photographer, like then get like somebody in your family or a close friend to read that over, to make sure that there's nothing missing in there. And somebody who is well-versed in that world, just, to make sure, like you said, everybody's covered when yes. if something crazy happens like COVID, like, you know, so oh, many, yeah. I feel like wedding photographers and wedding pros like redid their contracts after COVID mm-hmm. because that was a crazy thing that nobody thought would ever happen, but it did. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I had to redo all my contracts. I mm-hmm. had to add, you know, an extra section and Luckily, I've had two amazing grooms in the past that are are lawyers. And so I've had, it's been nice to have my lawyer grooms look over my contracts and tell me if I didn't see anything. So um, (laughs) I would say like as a professional photographer, any professional in the wedding industry, have a lawyer look over it. Like that'll Mm -hmm. help tremendously, especially after what we went through with COVID. Um, Having a lawyer look over your contract and making sure it's like solid and there's no cracks in it because that's what ended up happening is like you had couples that found cracks in the contracts and like no fault of their own, like COVID you couldn't really help anything, but Mm -hmm. um, a lot of vendors didn't see that they had cracks in their contract and they had to give all of that money back or the deposit back or they didn't have that money and they ended up going to court. So it was just, it was, Yeah. So contracts on both sides, make sure it's legal Mm -hmm. and make sure that you have all, all of it put together. So you're not going to be in trouble. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Great advice. I love this. So (laughs) kind of switching gears and going to the more pretty side of things. How can you tell if your photos (laughs) will stand the test of time? (laughs) So there are a lot of different fads that go on in the photography industry. Um, Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that are super popular right now and that, you know, will fade away in 10, 20 years. Um, So I think editing is a huge thing. Um, When you look at the photographer's editing, and if you love it now, you have to think about, are you going to love it in 20 years when it's on your wall? Is it truly going to stand the test of time? Is it timeless? And so my editing, I don't really do like a crazy amount of editing. I change the greens because sometimes green is just a little too much. And so yeah. like my editing is pretty natural. Um, so my business words are, you know, romantic and natural um, and modern. And so 
I try to stay very much with what, you know, God gave us green grass, God gave us blue sky, and I don't want to alter that. Um, And that's why my couples book me is because that's the style that they prefer and that in 20 years they're going to love their photos um, because it's not a certain type of editing that was in style at that time. So, um, Mm -hmm. you know, every photographer has their own style, but as the bride, that's the beauty of being the bride and groom is that you get to choose what style you like, um, Mm -hmm. and know that in 20 years, you're still going to like it. So, but you have to ask yourself that question. Um, when you're looking at the photos in 20 years, is it still what you loved, you know, when you got married? Yeah, I think that's great advice. And, um, just glad that the sepia tone is out of style now. And, uh, (laughs) I mean, it could come back. It could you come never back around. Know. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Everything oh, has just... a cycle. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, that, yeah, that might end up coming back. The high yeah. grain is super in right now. And you might as well it add some a tone into it as well. Because no. just, whew, it's it's been interesting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I know, <laughs> just the trends that come around of even poses, you know, like yeah. certain poses and are trends in photography as well, not just editing styles, you know, like yeah. having all the bridesmaids come around with their and make like a little halo around the bride's face, oh. like, you know, and just oh, all the different gosh. poses and things that we did of like, let's take pictures of our feet. Like, I don't know, my my husband and I have yeah. like feet pictures like from our wedding. I'm like, this is a little weird, but okay. I guess that's what we did back in 2011. Uh, so, you, yeah. And that's the thing like too, is you need to look at the photographer. I, I think another thing that you should do when you reach out to a photographer is ask for a full wedding gallery because yes. you will be able to see what style they do and how they document the day. So if you see a photographer that has like, the feet photos <laughs> like are you really gonna use that like yeah. the way that I shoot a wedding day is I shoot practical like I photograph my couple as if they're going to hang each photo on their wall and are they gonna hang a photo of their feet on the wall I don't yeah. think so I mean yeah. I wouldn't I, I just yeah. so if you want a photographer that does it cool awesome they're artistic love that for you cool but personally mm-hmm. me and my couples are not going to like that so yeah. yeah looking at a full wedding gallery is really important so then mm-hmm. you know what you're getting yourself into with the photographer mm-hmm. that you book yeah for sure <laughs> disclaimer we had our shoes on for the feet photo <laughs> it's not that weird <laughs> It was just like those like cute, uh, what are we saying? Like more like indie sort of things where like I just like pulled my dress up to my knees and you know, like that sort of thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I remember like when I first started, that was a huge thing. I mean, I started second shooting in 2012. And so that Mm -hmm. still was like a thing back then. Oh yeah. And so it's crazy of how much has changed. (laughs) I know. Totally. Who knew that when we started this conversation, this is what we would be talking about at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Oh, well, I loved this conversation. This was so fun. Is there anything else that you want to share? Or you can kind of tell us, like, where people can find you online and, and look at your work and everything, too. Yeah. So you can find me at www.withwhimsyandwilder.com. Um, and then on my website actually has all of my Facebook and my Instagram links. Um, Instagram it's with dot whimsy dot wilder. Um, and then Facebook, it's just with whimsy and wilder. So I don't think a lot of people use Facebook anymore. I'm more of an Instagram Mm -hmm. girl. So yeah, (laughs) same, same. Yeah. I've actually found lately that I'm getting more traction on TikTok and I don't really use it a lot. I just more push whatever I put on Instagram there, but I'm like, wait, how did I get more like interaction there? So I might be uh, focusing a little more on that. But I also wanted to ask you, what does the name behind your photography business mean? Oh, so with Whimsy and Wilder, so I did a full rebrand in November. Um, I used to be Ella Adel Photography for Mm -hmm. years. I started Ella Adel Photography in 
2009 is when I started wow. Ella Adele Photography. Um, and my life has changed tremendously since then. Um, I had gotten married, I got divorced, and then I started dating my husband. We got married, we have a little boy, um, mm -hmm. and his name is Barrett Wilder. And I with how much my life has changed, I wanted to include my family. Um, yeah. So I'm the whimsy and Barrett's the Wilder. Oh, and so uh, my sweet. logo, <laughs> my logo has uh, four birth flowers and it represents all of us in our family. So my husband and I, oh. and then my bonus son and then um, Barrett. So I wanted to include all of that. And also my horticulture background. I love flowers. Yeah. I know oh, how so to throw cool. a bouquet together. I can grow lots of different things. And <laughs> so I wanted to include floral somewhere into my new business. And so with Whimsy and Wilder, with the flowers, it just made total sense. So that's the story. <laughs> I love that. It has so much meaning behind it. And I know you mm -hmm. put so much meaning into your work. And so I just love that about your business and everything that you put together and so and your photography work yeah. is beautiful you guys if you're listening watching like go and check <laughs> out on her website on her instagram page and so this has been so awesome thanks for chatting with me for Thank you. you know this little time here it's been so great and we will catch you later sounds good all right <laughs> bye bye, bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Wedding Reporter Podcast. I hope you learned a little bit and had fun today. To find more resources and podcast episodes, visit NashvilleBrideGuide.com for more information. And as always, click the subscribe button and leave us a review. Until next time, I'm Alyssa DeChico, signing off.